Now, um, I am the pleasure to present uh, Emanuela Ortiz Lopez. Uh, Emanuela Ortiz Lopez obtained his bachelor degree in communication and electronic engineering in 2009 and his master degree in electric engineering in 2011. Currently, he is a PhD candidate uh, at the University of Guanajuato. And he is working as engineer, as a, as a research engineer in Continental. And today he is going to present uh, us the work uh, they are doing and as application of the artificial intelligence in Intel. And that is uh, it's a very, very important um, work uh, because uh, as you know, Continental is one of the main companies working in the automobile industry. So um, please, when you want, you can start. You have uh, more or less 45 minutes for your presentation. Uh, after that, uh, uh, people who surely will be interested in your work, Mm -hmm. uh, may ask you some question. Go ahead, Emmanuel. Thank you. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Greetings. I am Emmanuel Ortiz Lopez, as I mentioned. Uh, currently, as an I as an, a, an a engineer in Continental R and D, Mexico, I'm part of the Autonomous Mobility Group uh, in the line course, on a team called Innovation Line Driverless. Um, today, well, I will speak with all of you about uh, the one topic that is. Well, very important for the company, I think, for any uh, area related with uh, AI, it's called uh, is interpretability, as in the sense of how they have an understanding how the models and how it works and validate the, the performance of how they, they should work. A um, little bit of notes, basically, I uh, have to mention in Continental, as just short to say, <laughs> Uh, we are a company that do more than tires <laughs> because we are, you know, we are, we are focused more in mobility and then as decade, basically, uh, we are providing donor technology. Currently in Mexico, at least is have at least 20,000 employees is the biggest, is the biggest workers force outside of Germany for this company. So actually the bigger than now we have two R&D centers, one is in Guadalajara. And the other one is in Querétaro, where I am currently working. So we are more focused on these uh, areas of safe mobility, smart mobility, autonomous driving, architectural networks. In, is beyond the, uh, there's not only on the car, but also the infrastructure around the mobility. That we're currently working. Um, we are working in. In challenge status quo and mobility, and we believe in thinking different, and actually, and we make a, a huge bet to how to uh, uh, do research and, and development and improvement technology from Mexico to the world. Okay, we are working in that sense. Uh, so let me start a little bit uh, uh, at this point, but I mean because one in. Uh, Sorry. In the version of this conference, I will speak of artificial intelligence or AI, but I have to make, I think I, I should be more specific on what I mean with AI. Uh, what is AI? What the short answer is a model, a mathematical method for prediction. And in specific, where I'm more focused on and what's called a narrow AI. So it's basically it solves highly focused set of tasks. And what I mean with that is, is the task like even a can be automated in a way, or but the machine can be perform well or perform better, as a, uh, in a way that even a human can do. But it's all uh, by certain human perspective, no. Uh, currently, for example, we have examples of voice assistants, of the textures, chess, or go play in algorithms, all of that. So I'm focusing that in the way, to focus on the, this application of interpretability in this area of neural AI. Uh, it is 
of this search or, or, or have the increased interest in this topic come from science students and uh, well, at the boom of deep learning. What is deep learning? Uh, and in summary, it's just a simple chain of continuous geometric transformations, which projects one, one, uh, one space vector into another. This is transformation of projections assumes the, the existence of learn number parameters to transform the input X into the desired output Y. Uh, this uh, type of methods of these type of networks have a, a big boom since uh, 2000, 2012 when, when uh, imagine Alex Net outperformed the top fire. So actually, when I mentioned this continuous transformation and geometric transformations is when we can see that we know that the deep learning provides solutions, but no the time is clear when in which way of fashion we get the results so at the right at that point. Uh, so interpretability <laughs> as this uh, cartoon from the New Yorker explained is how to get an idea, for example, in autonomous diving, whether you can <laughs> pull it or Understanding what is what there is the decisions or what make the decision of the AI algorithm or model to how do they reach that to, to solutions. Um, and the first approach that we get when is uh, interpretability is basically interpretability helps to fulfill something is called the on on or of super specification problem. What do you mean with uh, with that? Uh, well. When we, apart from uh, AI, pretty much, we get a black box, and we assume that uh, we assume a solution, but we don't have clear, for example, what is important for the model, or what is it more should be relevant, or no, or what should not be relevant, for example, or what what must be avoided, and and a problem to be solved. So when I work with the PTB, the the first. Uh, Point of interpretability will, will we feel that under specification problem or what we mean on AI applications? Uh, we can ask, for example, uh, when example knows on an example no under specification will be, for example, what is safety? Safety for who? For what? When is a safety? When uh, there is the same question that not only involves uh, the training of the model, or the vision of the model, but also how to act, uh, annotate the model and how this, because if we understand all of that, we can now not only, uh, so to say, debugging, but also find liability and fail, failure test and failure test and what is the model doing? What is the doing? Uh, all the time, interpretivity is required or, or something that should be needed. And the question is, yes, I know. <laughs> and sorry, say the ambiguous here, but the reason why is yes, I know is if this is a sensitive domain, for example, credit scoring, finance, healthcare, and self driving cars, for example, yes, we because you are liable for the what the AI model does, what the what decisions it make, what the solving the problem, was, there's a liability in that problem. But it, you don't need, for example, interpretability if the model, for example, if, if the addiction of the model doesn't have significant consequences. If something goes wrong, it doesn't happen, nothing. Uh, the other will be uh, that the problem is well, uh, well, well studied. For example, you have an, another, another solution can, that did you, you exactly know what's happening, how to, to solve it. So, no, it's all the time. So. I think we have to spell that criteria. Uh, also becomes the yes and no, to be more clear what the yes and no, for example, is not always the test set accuracy testing. I guarantee, guarantees that the model have a desired behavior or resolved by the desired properties and problems. So I can be a little bit more detailed than that. For example, interpretability, when I was speaking of interpretability, I didn't speak about translation. And I mean with that is, I don't need, for example, translate every filter, every weight for model, every 
to the to numerical potential because at the end of the day, numerical value doesn't full have, um, how to say, a translation. The uh, example that I put here, for example, is the, in Japan, Japanese, you have the word komerebi, that means sun shall fit into leaves, but that same word doesn't have such equivalent of, as a word, as a, one single description in English. Uh, but there, um, another way to put it, every translation is a, is a, is a tradition. <laughs> Sorry, it's a traitor. Every translator is a, is a traitor, <laughs> so to say. So, what we need to uh, understand in the pitability is, is, under, is get, you want, is understand that we, it's a problem to see if the model have the same properties that, that are aligning with the goal of the model and the downstream task. So we can show focus on that problem. I here I mean a problem. Basically, the goal of interpretability is that our values of what the people design in the model, implement the model, are aligned with the solution. And also that the model reflects at least some kind of intuition learning process or, or, the, or the expert knowledge is desirable of the people that is uh, that planted that model. An example I can Mention is, for example, we can see the image size sharing and I see the like the traffic like and do um, cars, for example. One example is if you run, for example, a traffic like that, uh, detection, um, and you can see, for example, so some models will struggle with that because will the models will see, for example, that that, that, that like looks yellow. And actually, if if you were the labeling the team <laughs> that will so label in that image to use it as a, uh, for the in training you actually probably you will tackle that as a yellow because indeed the look the, the light looks yellow the only reason we know that that traffic light is red is the, because we know how we have intrinsic knowledge that the position of the in that light should be a red not a yellow one so when we plant a model that can solve that task, maybe we can not only focus on the color, but also focus in the position of the point of the light. So it's something very, it, it, it is important to that, that the model should be aligning what we already know that we can be important to solve a problem. It doesn't matter what it does, okay? Interpretability also have a criteria. The criteria for interpretability is that depends of interpretation points or a downstream task on a downstream task. And what I mean with downstream task is I mean that is the criteria is um, depends on who consume or will consume the product of the interpretability, the square explanations. And the reward we consume such explanations depends on the level of information that is needed. For example, I put an example here when one user that you do during the during a, serv a service, see that it's informing that the night automatic night likes require additional check, for example. But uh, the agent uh, of such a uh, technician uh, <laughs> that is uh, agent, for example, that received the car, for example, the, the, the information that you need to know, for example, for the technician is that the light intensity sensor is, is having issues, for example, and the explanation, for example, the technician needs for fix that issue is that the ACU of the car needs an update, or an updated firmware or the version. So everyone have the same, for example, same issue, but everyone needs different information depends on what level of user you are on that set. So it's a way to put it. Uh, but also I had to meet the biggest criteria for interpretability is that every explanation should be relevant to human. That to say this, if the information don't have a, a mathematical result or for the other computer doesn't make sense for you because we have different aspects of that. Um, one of the biggest, um, also 
challenges of interpretability is that interpretability is not the same thing as accountability, traceability, fairness, and trust. But this is a way to, to reach that, uh, that concepts. That means some problems can be solved through interpretability to, to achieve accountability or traceability, but other ways, sometimes you don't need that interpretability to achieve that such a thing. One example of that, for example, is um, in 2018, uh, Reuters uh, uh, report um, this issue when uh, where basically uh, as a, a company have a re, um, machine learning model that reviews uh, curriculums, CVs, and what this uh, model was doing was pretty much was not, cons not taking as a candidate any woman to apply for a technical role. And the issue with that, honestly, doesn't need to be debated because if you take a, a, a look on the expression, a good expression of the data, you can see that the data that they use, for example, is historic data of their hiring processes. When they reflect, for example, that at least uh, in technical roles, the woman is still a minority in much of the technical roles. So they don't really, they, Leave, for example, these uh, parameters of the gender <laughs> in the in the condition of the model. So the model have has a very low probability that a female will be a good candidate for engineer. But if you see this one, you don't need interpretability for to find this in fairness. But nevertheless, it's possible to use an interpretability to achieve something. This also something in that fashion. Okay. Um, as I mentioned previously, the biggest um, or the product of interpretability in the particular case is explanations. In explanations should be accurate, it's a, like an accurate reflection of the model and have to be meaningful to humans. The explanations can be split in two categories. Basically, there's the local ones that explain basically explain a single point the best as possible. I mean, which point, for example, lead, why a model take this point and explain the result of that, of that, of that point the best as possible. Or you have the global one explanations that provide a general description of the behavior of the model. Uh, and two subcategories of that will be model specific. I mean, models that are, um, Explanations that are specific to a certain model. Uh, yeah, I mean, could you have in pretty much an insight of the model and model agnostics? Pretty much you deal with them uh, with the model as a black box. Okay. So you have this uh, paradigm, but the same, uh, again, the product of interpretability is called an explanation. We have different ways to get interpretability. Um, we, for example, we have interpretability before any building any model, and this interpretability comes from that, that analysis, visualization of data, statistics, anything that helps you to understand what all data comes, when data performs, where it comes from, how the, how can be used, anything that gives you a better insight of how the all data is used and around. So this understanding is very critical because. We assume always that we only need more data to have a better model. But at the end of the day, data is made by humans. Any data that comes from humans is, is dirty. So we need to be, be a very, very uh, thoughtful about have a very good um, look on, or, on, our, on our data. Uh, later on, we have something is called um, Inter, uh, well, interpretable by design. I mean, we are now building a model. So, sorry. So we start building a model so we can build, get interpretability into fashion the process of building a model. One is get models that are designed to be interpretable. In this case, for example, this is a neural backpropagation trees. Basically, it is the backbone of a neural or a different network with, and it's replacing um, some part of that for a decision tree. In this way, for example, they suspected that we understand how every inference, for example, every decision is made. 
uh, the issue with that is the depending on the complexity of the decisions of the number of layers and the, the models eventually be, even in the decision tree it stop to be interpretable because it's very huge and certain limits. So following how, why in these decisions becomes very difficult. And listen, from the human perspective, for the human perspective, because the alliance, the humans need to consume this information. Okay. Um, this is one way, it's, it's interpreted by design. Another way to have interpreted by design, for example, we see in, in, the, in the previous slide about explanations, for example, you can not do something is called knowledge distillation. Knowledge distillation, distillation, sorry, is get a huge model, a transfer, training uh, well, performing well, when announced is performing well, you distill that knowledge to a smaller, translate uh, interpretable model, so you can get that one. But, and the metal is, and so depends on the complexity of the task, the complexity of the data is managed, of the sort of levels, it's not directly applicable. Uh, it's not always interpretable. But, okay. Other process, do, other approaches, and, and, and this is phase of building a model, for example, is getting inside of what the model is uh, learning or doing, for example, or struggling. Uh, one example of this I like it very much is called something called base of gradients. Base of gradients is a valuable expensive met proxy metric for detecting outliers in data distribution. This, that's, meaningful, that's a meaningful way to rank the data by difficulty and show how manageable a subset of a subset of data is or what or how much or how challenging is to manage this data set or manage data to manage by the model. So we can now did, for example, the process of training. Uh, for example, uh, we have an example here, for example, a model that have a lowest bias of gradients, for example, to the, to the to classify horses. When the horses is fully is static or complete, but high and high highest score in base of in base of gradient, when the image, for example, as a close-up of the horse or only one part of the horse. That meaning, for example, that you have uh, a sort of lack of distribution, for example, in your data about the presentation of the horse in your data. So you need to, re to re a little bit, move a little bit back and analyze your data and add more scenes or more description of the horse because you have, your model is not high weight performance when they are close-ups of the horses. For example, but this can be doing in the process of training. This actually one better, it's one of the best approaches I find out about this kind of uh, in process building a model. Uh, well, that's what, what happens if we receive a model? I mean, we don't be involved in the part of the creation of the model, so we can uh, start after the building models. Very much leading as a little black box. Uh, the first approach we start is the ablation test. The ablation test basically is removing, uh, consider removing features of the, input of the model to see the impact on the model. These methods are a very much focus on local explanations. Uh, e, here is the disadvantage of local explanations. Local explanations can be contradictory. And when I mean contradictory is uh, we can take one is one point of this and explain it the best as they can for in the, in one side of the, for example, and of the classifier and explain the next move at the other side of the, for example, I put here, uh, sorry, uh, such a description, for example, it's been the, another point of the, uh, and the, to explain another model, another, sorry, another point for the model, and we can get an explanation that will be contradictory for the first one. And um, so to say, for example, an example that I, I like it, for example, this is, this is for example, using it in finance. Uh, in finance, for example, uh, if I can submit a, a credit, a search of credit will be approved, for example, in one point, for example, and tell me that my my credit is approved because I am Mexican. But if I take a look at another point, H or, or whatever I mean, uh, more, more, another point to explain, for example, this such a point 
can explain that I wasn't approved, the creditor wasn't approved for my for me because I am Mexican. So this has happened. Doesn't mean that it's not important, but when we take um, look at explanations, we me me, me focus on what uh, points are critical for us to explain the explanation. So that, that there's a bunch of methods that deal with um, sorry with uh, this approach of feature uh, removal. Uh, so sort sort of thing. Uh, uh, such a thing, for example, involves uh, shape uh, values, so like that. Um, next one, move, move on to another approach after you do the model. We can do investigation of the hidden layers. This approach, for example, is not in a black box, but we can detect the model, for example, you see uh, internal activations of the filters of how the filters are performant with respect to an input. <laughs> Uh, for example, an example, one example of this as an approach is called the DCAP score. The DCAP score, for example, give, tells you that you can pro, you should provide a concept that describes uh, what is unique or relevant for your point of view for the class to be to be important. In this case, for example, it's proposed that the stripes are the very uh, how high is for a higher feature that will provide the description of a zebra. So, um, so we need to focus on, on that. I'm uh, sorry, I said. So we take the, the an example, what DKEP does is take the zebra, uh, we apply run, uh, fit the model with the image of the zebra and recollect the, the activations, or the information of the activations layers. We, provide also images, for example, with the stripes and see the actual activation of the models the, or the exhibition of the layers. And we provide random concepts to see and also get the activation of such images. This other one is building a pretty much a linear, a linear classifier and the magnitude of the orthogonal of this line, a linear classifier is the higher the score of uh, the score of, of such a TCAP uh, method. The higher the score is, the higher the importance of that feature is to the to to, to the, oh, oh sorry, which this feature is intrinsic to the class. How, how the score is, how important that the object that feature is to get the right classification. The issue with that approach, because have an issue and all the advantage, is a powerful one, but have the biggest advantage that every feature will be have a unique intrinsic description for every class that you want to get. One, one challenge that can put in that kind of solution, for example, is how you can get a visual concept, a description feature, that is different, uh, that can be make a difference between a dog and a cat. <laughs> you don't have that value, the such a solution maybe is hard. So we can move for that. There are much methods. I, I only mentioned the various relevant uh, at least uh, that will describe pretty much the template, the thread that's inside of this approach. But of, for example, how we, we can evaluate or we can just choose with method interpretability we can use. Well, first of all, one, the biggest challenge, uh, as I mentioned before, of interpretability is fulfill this on the, present, on the specification problem. So the first step is formally describe the cyber properties of what you want the model does and does and does. Uh, what I mean with that, <laughs> you, know, you know, you should be uh, what things should what the model should do and what things the model shouldn't do. And this is important because we can, after describe the qualitative features, we can apply quantitative features to measure, to measure such a desired properties. We can define a formulated uh, grant or experiment that can have save us as a grant truth and do experiments and choose on the methods that can maybe can help us to, uh, to uh, formulate such experiments. Okay, later on we have, uh, for example, one, one idea how to evaluate such interpretability methods because no only for frauds we can uh, make us because also um, 
we now we want that the uh, the interpreted methods are better than educated than educated guests, but are better than a random guest. So we can how do we make sure that the interpreted methods are working? One of the approaches, for example, a good example of a correct implementation of, of this is the raw work. Pretty much <clears throat> what this model does is this model identifies which vectors are important for the classification. This one are removed and let it on remove it and try also the model let it on train with <laughs> such data, such, such a data with the, the movie features. And if the performance, if the model start uh, performing poorly, the comparison of the previous one, and have decided to have the same data but not the same features anymore, you can say that the, actually your, um, your, your explanation is correct. And you have the right features why the model is detecting one one. And you have a uh, good explanation of that. A quantitative aspect of also you can measure how important such a features are, are for the model. Another approach, for example, that uh, I personally use this one in my work uh, is called the relation game. The relation game pretty much is similar to the other one is to start um, deleting, for example, what the model will provide you as an explanation to what support, which is important, and measure is if. In, it's start deleting, deleting until the model doesn't doesn't classify or detect that topic anymore. If the area under the curve or the feature remove it is very, for example, very low, you can see that you have a good explanation. An example, I'm going to tell you for them. This is an explanation. This explanation, for example, comes from a method called this rise. The method much is this addition test, the more features on the image, and then and another detector model. And this tell, in this case, for example, this expansion for the, for the person and the image. You can see that, for example, the model is telling you, or the expansion is telling you, sorry, that the head, the, the arms, and the legs, for example, are important features for the model to detect a person. Later on, you can see we start removing the, the features for the more important to the lower importance. And you can see that if we, as, as soon as we delete such a features of the head of the, of the legs, the, um, the class person or the, of this person in particular is lost. <laughs> you don't have, so we have that that, that feature is, a, that features are very, very are, uh, are relevant for the model. And actually in this particular case, also as a sanity check, we take a look at the features that are actually highlighted are intrinsic at or related to the class because Sometimes then you have, will have, for example, detections for a class, but we use, for example, some background, some issues, something that is not intrinsic or related to the object of interest. Uh, here as a, as a warning, because a lot of methods that you will find, at least for image specification, are related with heat maps. Uh, and I work on 2019 for uh, Adebayo, it show you that uh, if you are based, for example, in some, it's called a, a method that's called GradCam, it's very famous. Uh, pretty much GradCam, um, you use a network and you randomize the network and you apply an image, you have the same explanations at the model that is well trained, no version of random one. So you are no, your heat map is no better than an um, edge, edge detector. So you should be, for example, apply techniques such as relation test, such as ROR, to make sure that the model is not do, your explanation, for example, is not just a, is not forcing a, a cognitive bias. So what I mean with cognitive bias is, for example, what that can do is that because you have these areas of interest that is maybe focus in the area or you are expecting an output, <laughs> you are telling that the output is, uh, Confirm is expecting that the output is confirms your expectation. That is cognitive bias. That's something that we should avoid. A little bit of one explanation is for on interpretability is a branch of what's called explainable, explainable AI. And currently, there are approaches on explainable AI in the industry. For example, a lot of them um, are focused now in the end users. That means that. Explanation doesn't come to the consumer of the product, but 
and right now we use it, for example, through machine learning engineers, pretty much in a quality assurance way that we want to debug and also have a quality insurance that the product or solutions doesn't have any issues. For example, in loan, uh, lots in finance, for example, you want to see the sense of completeness. I mean, with appearances, uh, it has your models is solid, but the right solution of what the credit should be uh, <laughs> provide. So we have, it is a, it's a work, it's actually, it's, the paper is called that much, many much learning, learning and deployment. Actually, I enjoy it. I recommend it. Um, but at the end of the day, also these practices and in the industry also comes. No, today, these explanations are consumed by engineers, but also uh, helps other uh, teams, other, for example, management, uh, stakeholders to get transparency of why you are working on that topic and the solutions I provide. Okay, now we have our uh, challenges, uh, how many interpretability. Uh, one of the biggest challenges is the state of the art of the interpretability is much, very much focused on two areas. One is natural language processing, and the other one is um, image specification. When you come from, uh, when you move, for example, now, not, but both of them are working in linear architectures, such as, for example, BG16. But when you move, for example, on another kind of object, um, Architectures, for example, number detectors are such as uh, uh, so, such a uh, SSD or YOLO or other uh, approaches. You have um, issues because the model is not linear, <laughs> have multi multiple solutions. Uh, you have a multiple header. You you can get the explanation, for example, in the case of the detectors, for example, of, of a local a anchor box. But doesn't mean that expansion is for all the anchor boxes of the <laughs> of the or there. So there's a challenge in how to work interpretability in models that are more complex and not linear as a as a BGD. Okay. Um, uh, and that is for the moment. Thank you for your attention. Uh, if you want to send continental, <laughs> please visit our site. Um, thank you for attention. Well, um, thank you, Emmanuel, for your talk. And someone has some, some question for mm -hmm. Emmanuel? Yes, okay. Here in the audience, we have one question. Okay. Hi. Um, this uh, idea of uh, interpretation or interpretability, in some sense, uh, is connected to a kind of subjectivity in the sense that different people might interpret things in, in a different way. Uh, when we talk about machines making interpretation, uh, how, how can we expect to, to find or to see this uh, subjectivity materializing? I mean, uh, there might be different machines making different interpretations or we must converge to a single kind of interpretation? How, how do you see that? Ah, well, that's the same question. One of the biggest absolute, no, revelations I have working on this topic is the subjectivity comes from where, what is the goal of the model? And I mean, when you, the, the idea is attractive that you have a single solution that you should feed a model that have an object, so an, an, an object evaluation no, or description of such a model, the explanation, for example. But sometimes uh, what we are omitting is that even the user of, of such a model, for example, depends on the task. So the data or the, or the model or the sort of thing. So it's more related on focus, what are the the, what is the baseline or, 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 of expectations on one task? Other than that, you can 
getting the interpretability based on the expectation of that task, not based on an in a in general one. And I don't know if that helps you. For example, one example that I can say with that, for example, is very important, for example, in to set is the like this is like this. I like it a lot. Um let me move a little bit. Um, this one. It depends on the level user, you have one criteria, but the minimum criteria of, of the payability, what how make it hard is the first one, the, end, the user that we need that for the explanation is important. So I get a machine that provide you an explanation. Okay, the product of the explanation is, is only a focus on what the person that need to consume that sort of information. And the reason that this information will be relevant for you is also set by you, what is important for you that the model does or doesn't do, so it can, can be reported to you. So it's, and that's, it's a well def, def work, working description of what is expected from your model. And whilst, at least, it's not what expected, what is, well, at least what expected as a good behavior. Because sometimes we don't have all the solutions, for example, of, Extensions of the result, but we want to have, for example, one that comes from my mind, for example, this the for example, the use of the creative course. Creative course, for example, in, in the US uh, is a big deal because all the information is based on in, in geographical information, and geographical information have a, a huge background, for example, of unfairness and racial bias, <laughs> so like that. And when you talk, for example, this data and took it as it is, your model only will be increased that bias on that description on application of credit scores, so like that. And one thing that you can do for a model to avoid such a thing is that you are at the beginning of the creation of the model or the expansion that you want to test or beyond test I said accuracy is, okay, how well our model should be avoid this racial bias, for example. There's one way to see. Okay. Someone else uh, has a question for Emmanuel? Okay, if there is no more question. Thank you, Emmanuel, for your talk. And uh, we, we are going to continue with, it, with our program. Thank you, Emmanuel, once Thank again. You.